Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill, the story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Oh yes, my friends, how deep does the rabbit hole really go? Well, that's what we are here to discover. Right. Dedicated to the only serious choice. The Gospel of Jesus Christ, the music, and the spoken word. You're watching Like Source Victory Television Live with me, your host, Pastor Jay Stan McCauley, inviting you to sit back and relax for the next 25 minutes as we continue our journey into the life-changing, life-giving, everlasting word of the Most High God. There we go. Crew finally gets it right. Nice transition. All right, I'm going to give people raises here, all right? Uh, Live television, you gotta love it, my friends. You gotta love it. There's nothing like the excitement of a live broadcast, no matter where you are or what's going on. As I was saying, dedicated to the only serious choice, the gospel of Jesus Christ in music and the spoken word, you're watching Light Source Victory Television Live. Broadcasting, of course, to the entire world from the greatest city on earth, Hartford, Connecticut. New England's Rising Star, it's time for Bible study. It's my Bible study time that I spend with you. We try and do it each and every Sunday through Thursday right here on AccessTV.org, Google Hangouts, and, of course, on Facebook. So get on the phone, call up friends and family, tell them it's time for Bible study. Stick and stay, don't go anywhere, my friends. We will be right back. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yes, oh yes. <clears throat> All right. I, are you are you as excited as I am? I mean, I am. I'm really. I'm. I'm. I'm excited. Why? Because it's it's time for Bible study, uh, and, and I love Bible study. You know, uh, I. It's not shtick for me. I mean, this 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 to me really is the most important hour of the day. I, I love this time of day because uh, it's time to get in the Word. And uh, after I finish this, I'm going to go eat. Okay, so uh, I have dinner after Bible study. All right, and that's one of the nice things, of course, about, you know, from, about broadcasting, of course, from, from one's own home. It makes it a lot easier, okay, and uh, much, more, um, much, more, much more convenient, if you will. All right. Uh, we're going to get right to this, the life-changing, life-giving, everlasting word of the Most High God. Uh, what we do here is we have Bible study. We don't do review. We jump right into it. That's why it's very important that you tune in each and every day that we broadcast, Sunday through Thursday, right here, accesstv.org. However you are watching this, this is where you need to be every night at 11 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Daylight Savings Time. Okay, if you watch us on demand or on the repeat side, if you will, when you can watch anytime you want, we just happen to be live, but you know, there's no prohibition as to when you watch. Uh, you can, you can, you know, just come here every day, set aside a particular time of the day when you have uh, your Bible study. All right, that way you will um, be sure to. Um, um, be in the life-changing, life-giving, everlasting word, and you'll grow. You know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you, if you don't um, read the word, then your faith won't grow. And if your faith doesn't grow, then just like not eating in the natural, uh, you'll, you'll starve to death. You will starve spiritually. And that's something you definitely, definitely don't want. On your television screen, the life-changing, life-giving, everlasting word, of the Most High God. As you can already see highlighted on your screen is the New Living Translation. Okay, that's on one side of your viewing screen. On the other side of your viewing screen is the uh, King James Version. 
we use both sides of the viewing screen. One of my mentors told me, if it isn't in the King James, it isn't in the Word of God. I know a lot of people still hold true to that. And so, therefore, we have both up. The modern English is there so that we can better understand uh, the modern English uh, of, of God's Word. Uh, that way, we don't have to pull out the concordance and do a whole lot of translation to get to what the New Living Translation has. All right. With that, let's start where we were when we were last together, which was uh, 23 hours and 34 minutes ago. Well then, should we keep on sinning? Romans chapter 6, verse 1, talking about faith and the necessity of faith as it relates to salvation and that without faith, uh, there is uh, no way that you can please God. All right, the Bible says those that come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And so you've got to have faith if you want to please God. Faith is the connection. It is the relationship that establishes once and for all the opportunity for you to have uh, eternal right standing with God, with the Father. All right. And so we've already established in Romans uh, chapter 1, verse 1, all the way to uh, the end of Romans chapter 5, that um, the law cannot get you into heaven. Your good works cannot get you into heaven. Uh, there is no pedigree in, 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 in terms of uh, your family lineage uh, of righteous holiness that will get you into heaven. And so, since all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, there is a necessity and a need for uh, someone to uh, uh, be gracious and pay the price for our error. The law establishes the means by which you are convicted. The law points out how flawed you are, how flawed we are as human beings. No matter how right standing you may think an individual is, God knows otherwise, and so do we ourselves about ourselves. We know that we're not all that in a bag of chips. We know that we fall short of God's glory. What we need to do is to then confess that, that we might uh, uh, be able to grow and, and, and learn of his word and, and be in right standing. Well, verse 6 says, you know, should we continue on sinning? You know, if grace is something that is necessary because of our sin, uh, one could make the argument, well, then the more I sin, the greater the grace. Well, that's a flawed argument. One might say that it is a, a somewhat uh, a silly and, and, and perhaps even foolish uh, to make an argument like that. And so here we have Paul continuing in his discussion. Uh, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more kindness and forgiveness it's 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 a self-evident truth here i mean it's it's axiomatic the answer is is it should be painfully obvious of course not since we have died to sin how can we continue to live in it or have you forgotten that when you became Christians, you were baptized to become one with Christ Jesus. We died with him. All right. So we died with Christ, baptized, become with one with, with Christ. All right. Now that you are, uh, as they like to say in, in, in holiness circles, saved, sanctified, and filled with the precious Holy Ghost. I mean, you know, now that you've been set aside, that the that the earnest of the uh, purchased possession, the down payment on the purchased possession, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit, uh, now that you've been set aside, that you've confessed your sins uh, before the Lord, should you now go out and just wantonly sin on the, on the, on the flawed notion that um, uh, your, your sin just begs more grace and mercy from God? Uh, that, 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 that's just foolish. If you're a Christian, if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, there's going to be an inward desire more and more to do that which is pleasing to him. For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead 
by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. All right? We were dead in trespasses and sin. We come to Christ. We establish the relationship because of what he's done on the cross. And now, born out of that death, we are given newness of life. So we, in essence, rise to newness of life, whereby we can uh, walk uh, in, in the glory of God's grace, demonstrating to others who are in need of the same salvation that God is indeed gracious. Because you who were once off in the way of the sinner, destined for eternal damnation and judgment, now that you're saved, it becomes abundantly clear to others that they also can be saved. So since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised as he was. Our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin, right? A slave is someone who is bound to do the bidding of his master, no matter whether his master is fair or unfair, whether he is evil and mean or good and righteous. Uh, the slave is bound and obligated to do the will of his master. Well, imagine your master being sin. Now, see, that the things you do are because you are a slave to sin. It isn't the sin that makes you a sinner. It's the fact that you're a sinner that causes you to sin. The outward manifestation of the works of the flesh are proof that you are a sinner. And then the law condemns you as a sinner because the law points out the areas where you fall short and demonstrates the things that you are going to do. So uh, your ability to perhaps um, abstain doesn't mean that you haven't desired to do, right? Sin doesn't begin with the act. Sin begins with the notion, the thought, the desire to do that which is pleasing to the flesh and is against the will of God. Death comes when the act is committed, all right? Because the penalty for sin is death. So every time you sin, you draw a death penalty against you. Okay, so, I mean, you've got like two million counts of open sin before the Lord. On any one count, you can be sentenced to eternal damnation. So, I mean, you know, I don't know how you get around that. I mean, there's some good lawyers, and I have, you know, good friends of mine that are, that are, that are lawyers. Uh, but, I mean, you know, it's going to take a whole army of lawyers to get you off from the, well, actually, you know, it, it might just take one good advocate. Hmm. 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 Sounds like perhaps a job for a Jesus. All right. Our old sin... Right? Our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. Verse 7, reading out of Romans chapter 6. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. And what is the power of sin? The power of sin is to bring upon you death. And since we died with Christ, we will, what? We know we will also share his new life. We are sure of this because Christ rose from the dead. And he will never die again. Death no longer has any power over him. He died once to defeat sin. And now he lives for the glory of God. Verse 11, top of your screen. So you should consider yourselves dead to sin and able to live for the glory of God through Jesus Christ or through Christ Jesus. Do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to its lustful desires. You know, sin is fun. Sin's fun. Yeah, uh, it, it's pleasing to the flesh. 
it stimulates and satisfies the mind. That's why you do it. All right? To do that which is pleasing to the Lord is present. To do the will of God is present. But then to do that which is pleasing to the flesh or pleasing to you and your will is also present. The Bible makes the argument, it is not I, but sin that liveth in me. For to do the will of God is there, but then also, so what is this? This, this flesh that you're in, in this tug of war back and forth, okay? Why do you desire to do that which is against the will of God? Because it, it pleases you, that's why. People do things that please them. People don't do things they don't like to do or that are unpleasant, unpleasant to them. Okay, now, I'm not talking about going to work and certain things that you may have to do in terms of obligation. When you have the freedom to do whatever you want, you generally choose to do something that you find pleasurable, that you find satisfying and stimulating. You don't do things that are uh, against your pleasure principle. All right? And so, sin is fun. You desire to... Go out and do that which pleases the flesh. But you know, once Christ comes in, now there's a new desire. You desire to do the things which demonstrate fruit of the Spirit. You see, it's impossible to demonstrate and manifest the fruit of the Spirit unless you have Christ in your life. Let's continue. Do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to lustful desires. Do not let any part of your body become a tool of wickedness to be used for sinning. Instead, give yourselves completely to God since you have been given new life and use your whole body as a tool to do what is right for the glory of God. Sin is no longer your master for you are no longer subject to the law which enslaves you to sin Instead, you were free by what? God's grace. So since God's grace has set us free from the law, does this mean we can go on sinning? Of course not. Don't you realize that whatever you choose to obey becomes your master? And you can choose sin, which leads to what? Death. Or you can choose to obey God and receive his approval. Thank you. God, verse 17 says in Romans chapter 6, thank God once you were slaves to sin, but now you have obeyed with all your heart the new teaching God has given you. Now you are free from sin, your old master, and you have become slaves to your new master, righteousness. All right? So you're free from your old master, which is sin, and you are now slaves of your new master. All right, you are compelled to do the will of God. You are compelled to do that which is righteous. All right, why? Because righteousness dwelleth in you. Right? With the mouth, the confession is made on that which the heart agrees. In order to exercise, excuse me, in order to demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit, there has to be something in you that pushes the fruit out all right that something is the indwelling holy spirit okay so when you were lost in the world when you were in the world and not subject to the law of god uh you know and you were uh, you were reckless and, and 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 wouldn't do the will of god you wouldn't do righteousness you did the things that were not convenient you did the things which brought upon you a a, a judgment and condemnation and destruction and you did them anyway because that was who you obeyed. That was your master. But now, the desire to do that which is right. You do the bidding of he who is full of grace and righteousness. And only caught up on the notion of slavery. You know, the word of God isn't here to justify slavery. Slavery, in all of its horror, in all of its worst forms, uh, you have to truly embrace and understand to get an understanding of just how horrible a taskmaster sin is. Everyone serves someone. Everyone is subject to something. It may be the devil, it may be the Lord, but everybody serves somebody. So God designed and fashioned and made you that you might have fellowship with him. Not that you would be in fellowship with Satan and the things of of the world absolutely not okay 
So we are free from sin. Our old master, your old master, my old master. And uh, we have become slaves to our new master. What is the new master? Righteousness. To do that which is good, that which is righteous before the Lord. I speak this way using the illustration of slaves and masters because it is easy to understand. Before uh, you let yourselves be slaves to impurity and lawlessness, now you must choose to be slaves of righteousness so that you will become holy. In those days, when you were slaves of sin, you weren't concerned with doing what was right. And what was the result? It was not good. Since now you are ashamed of the things you used to do, things that ended in natural, excuse me, in eternal doom, but now you are free from of the power of sin and have become slaves of God. Now you do those things that lead to holiness and result in eternal life. For the wages of sin is what? Death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. All right. The wages of sin is death. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away by his own lusts and desires. When you act on the temptation, it brings forth death. All right? Death is the penalty for sin. Now, if Christ be Lord and master of your life, then you ought to think of yourself as in servitude, voluntary, servitude to him. All right. Now, when you get married to somebody, you, you volunteer to, to be in service to. Right? The husband does not have ownership of his own body, but the wife. And likewise, the wife hath not ownership of her own body, but the husband. You belong to each other. It is voluntary. You, it, you enter into voluntary servitude uh, when you get married. All right? And so it is a good service when you join the military you volunteer to join the military you volunteer to become a fireman you volunteer to become a police officer all right you volunteer to become a member of the coast guard or a rescue worker or to work in a secret service to protect a high-ranking officials or to be a bodyguard for somebody who is a a vip or a rock star or a, a famous celebrity i mean you know no one makes you put uh, yourself in a position where your life is on the line in, in terms of, of your job. You might be able to uh, ride uh, uh, bulls. Maybe you do bull riding, the fastest eight seconds in sports, right? You get on the bull, you could be trampled to death. Right? But you, 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 you volunteer to do these things. No one comes, puts a gun to your head and say, you're going to do this. All right? So, why is it somehow bad? Why is it somehow awful? Uh, why is it that people have a hard time wrapping their minds and, and, and heads around the notion that you are a slave to Christ? You see, the, the idea that, well, you know, I don't want to be a slave to nobody. Now, I came out of slavery and bondage. Now you're going to tell me I, I got to be a slave to God? I, 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 that's, that's not my kind of God. But see, the issue here is one of, 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 of submission. You know, in order for salvation to have a full effect, in order for it to be real, one must be willing to submit oneself to the Lord. Whereby you say, I call him Lord and Master. I mean, confessing that Jesus, the Bible says that no man can say that Jesus is Lord without, without the Holy Spirit. But quite frankly... Jesus is Lord whether you believe in him or not. The Bible tells us in James that the devils not only believe, they tremble. I mean, the devils, the demons, they know beyond a shadow of a doubt. There's, there's no discussion, there's no debate on the validity on the, uh, on the, uh, 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 of who Jesus is. All right? Jesus, Jesus doesn't need to be validated by 
you in order to in order to to exist and be relevant and be real nothing could be further from the truth and nothing could be be more foolish okay he is god all by himself he will remain god if you deny him he cannot deny himself for he is lord of lords and king of kings he alone saves and changes lives You have to submit to him. To say that he is Lord is a great thing. But until he becomes master of your life, he isn't the Lord of Lords and King of Kings in your life. And that's what's necessary and that's what's essential. If you're going to walk the walk of salvation and uh, stay in the grace of God. It, it, it's Christianity 101. It's as basic as one can get, my friends. Unfortunately, we're out of time. I hate that. And once upon a time, we would be on the air all night. Uh, but we don't do that anymore. But, uh, you know, the, the standard running time for the program was an hour. But you know, I have a saying. If you can't say it in 30 seconds, then you just don't know how to say it. So, 30 minutes should be long enough. This is enough food for now. Go reflect on this. Search the scriptures to see if the things that we've been talking about are indeed so. When it's all said and done, my friends, the only thing you need to know is Jesus saves. You have an obligation to go out and tell others about God's saving grace if you know him as your personal Lord and Savior. God bless you all. Keep you strong in the faith. We will be back here tomorrow night to do it all once again. God bless you. Bye-bye.